because now I have the Bucks at five. Yeah, you got all the tough ones. This is my least favorite pick in the entire draft. If I'm the if I'm the Bucks GM, I never would have re-signed Donovan Smith at left tackle. So I would have, and then I would have drafted Jonah Williams to play left tackle mm -hmm. at Alabama. So that would be my pick. But because he's locked up, there is still some question marks at guard. And Demar Dotson at right tackle, like you know, again, he's not going to keep me from drafting Jonah Williams. So Jonah still might be my guy. But the way, because Jonah is the only guy that we have at the top five grade, yes, left on the draft board. Then we start to get into top tens. So now I might need to resort back to my best player available strategy. If we're talking now, best player available is also you know fit. I'm sorry, scheme fit, positional value. It's all factored in mm -hmm. there as well. So doesn't Ed Oliver potentially fit here for the Bucs? Does Jerry Tillery fit here based off of our board? I don't think Byron Murphy at corner we like is a great fit. I'm going to go Jonah Williams. Got to go Jonah Williams. I'm going Jonah Williams, the offensive tackle from Alabama. He could play guard, not because his arms are short, just because he could. Mm -hmm. But um, I think there's, there's obviously starting tackle potential there. And um, that's, you know, going by the board, that's the guy that I think is the fit for the Bucks. Yeah, I think right guard still a need. It's not like they have a fully complete offensive line at the moment. Caleb Beninock is your starting right guard uh, if the season were to start today. DeMar Dotson is 33 years old. So Joan Williams started right guard right away. Be the heir apparent at right tackle. I, Play I don't, right tackle, which is a valuable position, just as valuable as left tackle. Yes, and so to me, the if he is the top player on your board, if you're the Bucks, they're sitting at five. He, you know, grade wise, he's the top player on your board. It's still a player who can make an impact right away and is a valuable. Will be at a valuable position at some point in his career if you're moving him to right tackle. So I do think from that perspective, it makes it feels a lot like of sense. it's it's unexciting for Bucks fans. Yes, I think anytime you get a guard slash tackle in the top. 10. It's unexciting mm -hmm. for the fans, but I, I think it's the right move here. Now I'm on the clock at number six with the New York Giants, and I will be 100% honest with you. I don't think this is the year I want to take a quarterback after what? Kyler Murray. This is not the year if I'm the New York Giants. I know that you need to get a guy at some point, but Dwayne Haskins at number six, you're penciling him in for a few years, and I just don't quite see it with Haskins. I'm not ready to make no him way. the guy. I thought this was slam dunk Dwayne Haskins for you. And so I'm going to go offensive line to improve whoever does end up being the quarterback because it's pretty much a tank year for the Giants this upcoming season. Whoever does end up being my quarterback because with the talent on that ras roster, they'll be at the top. You can't always say you're going to be in the top 10, but I think with the talent on that roster, you can pretty much safely pencil them in to the top 5 to 10 picks in 2020. So then at that point, you'll be in a position to get a quarterback that year. Get an offensive line and go around. I'm picking Jawan Taylor, right wow. tackle, out of Florida, because right tackle is the need there for the Giants. Right tackle is where it's open. I'm going Jawan Taylor. Oh, talk about it. I was saying the Bucs are, fans are going to be unexcited. Matt Matt just left the room. <laughs> Giants fans just left the room. He just, he's, he's really angry right now. You just drafted Matt, the right tackle at six. You have one of the best. You went from a terrible, terrible offensive line to now possibly one of the best offensive lines in all of the NFL in the next couple of years. You don't... You would hate to have one of the best offensive lines in the NFL when you do finally get your chance at a franchise quarterback. I don't think that that's a terrible pick there. For so you think, Taylor is the so guy. you're okay with the Giants? You think the Giants tank tank a little bit? I mean, they're going to have another top ten pick, mm -hmm. and then they get into the two of sweepstakes next next yep. year or Herbert. Uh, Justin Herbert. Adam really? Morgan. Yep. I get the Panthers at sixteen. This is kind of tough the way the board fell for the Panthers. I'm not sure. I would I mean, have loved, could, like, Brian Burns might be this best-case scenario yeah. for them mm -hmm. because they would love an edge. He's off the board. Jeffrey Simmons still sitting there at top, our, top of our board, but I'm considering some of the injury stuff and which team, yeah. like, which team do I really want to take that risk with, mm -hmm. even though he's at, top of our, at, at the top of our board. Um, offensive tackle, potentially a spot here for the Panthers. There's three guys to look at. Darrell Williams at right tackle is only locked up for one more year. There's still questions along that offensive line. Mm-hmm. I think that's where I'm going to go, Mike. I think that's the place to go. O line. So, yeah, Daryl Williams, one year, very big injury risk there. Taylor Mouton was very good at right tackle a season ago. I'm, I think they have planned to move him back to left if Williams is yeah. back in the fold and Khalil out now. So, 
you can't have too much talent offensive line with Cam Newton, with the way he plays and with how injured he's been over the past handful of years. I think something to protect him, I would not argue with you if but, he did. So here, but I, here's where I might go away from our board and, and go to the guy that has a little bit more positional versatility, I think, in Dalton mm-hmm. Reisner mm-hmm. from Kansas State. Our board's telling me Andre Dillard from Washington State. He's a tackle only. Reisner, I think, can play anywhere along the uh, offensive line. Mm-hmm. It gives me some flexibility. With, if I bring Moton and Darrell Williams back, I can move Reisner to one of the interior positions. I'm going Dalton Reisner. He was a right tackle at Kansas State. Incredible career there in the Big 12. But he's given me a little bit more positional versatility, so I'm taking Dalton Reisner from K-State at 16 to the Panthers. Yeah, I mean, I can't argue with that. Our projections of analytics love him in terms of uh, how he projects to the next level. Uh, I'm not they sure do. he's necessarily the best tackle prospect in terms of that but i think he's going to be a very good guard a very good center if that's where you want to play him i think he could be a good tackle as well uh, the panthers are in like what we just sort of mentioned the panthers they need some offensive line help with how good mccaffrey and that newton combo is running the football it's a, one of those teams where i think having a strong offensive line can take your running game to the next level can take you to this dominant run game if you have a dominant offensive line with that option stuff that they do run uh, you're on the clock again. Sorry. So now I am back, back on the you clock. Got yes. even. So you're go, you're looking at the Vikings. I'm looking at the Titans at 19. I and I go O line and I go best O line available. Yes. Again, they can draft tackle here and move Riley Reef to go. You have flexibility with some of those guys. I'm going to draft Andre Dillard. I'm going to throw him at left tackle. I'm going to put Riley Reef at left guard, and I'm going to pray that Andre Dillard <laughs> can come in and be a plus pass have to protector. Take a shot at O-line. He's yeah. the most accomplished pass protector in this class in terms of he was tra- taking 600 plus pass sets for the last three years at Washington State at tackle position. So it performed really well. And performed really well. Highest pass blocking grade in the nation this past season. Uh, tested out through the roof. Freakish testing numbers. Has all the traits you want from a tackle. So from that perspective, I feel very confident in his projection from tackle to the, from college to the NFL. Uh, I went Jawan Taylor earlier because I think Jawan Taylor, he's on the right side already. Giants, you need a right tackle. That pushes him over, the, pushes him up a little in my board just because I don't want to be switching sides with guys. Dillard, though, been at left tackle, done it. Makes sense for the Vikings. I like it. There you have it. That's it. So 22. Ravens are up. Baltimore Ravens on the clock. And I love the idea of beefing up the offensive line in Baltimore getting another guy in there at guard, a dominant run blocker in someone like Cody Ford. Oh, no. To then just solidify that offensive line, go five across in guys that, and just bully teams in the run game. Because that's how you have to play. We've said the run game's not as valuable, but when you can utilize your quarterback in a system that the Ravens ran a season ago, you saw how much that can transform your rushing attack to a viable. You're never going to be the Kansas City Chiefs with a rushing attack in the NFL. You're never going to be that level of offense, but you can still run a top 10 offense with a run heavy approach. And with Lamar Jackson, I think that is the way you want to go. Receiver gets devalued in a system like that. Offensive lineman gets valued. Cody Ford, the best offensive lineman available on our board right now, is the pick. You're He's all 22nd about that. on our big board, so 22nd to 22nd. The, the perfect value. That is perfect value right there. Um, you are all about that build in the run game. In Baltimore, in Baltimore, or at least buying into it. Yes. If you, I mean, if you have to, if you're gonna commit to it, then completely buy in. Mm-hmm. So that part makes sense. All right, number forty-two. I have the Cincinnati Bengals uh, drafting in the first round. They went ahead and picked Dwayne Haskins, their quarterback yeah. of the future. Someone to give Andy Dalton some competition there. In the second round, though, I'm gonna give. Dwayne Haskins, some offensive line help. Here's where Greg Little comes off goes. the board. Offensive tackle. Bobby Hart, I know they <laughs> I know they paid him uh, to be their starter there, but Bobby Hart's not stopping me from upgrading the tackle position. Just because no. I have seven million committed to him each of the next couple seasons does not mean I don't want to get better there. You want to get a lot better. Greg Little, I think, from day one will be a better player. Yeah, I like it. And it's it's where I, I think Little has really good uh uh, value there in the second round mm-hmm. a guy with uh, former far- five-star recruit and uh top of the seconds where we've where we yeah. valued him oh man that's what so i've got the falcons up next and i'm looking at their roster and i would have loved Juan right. thornhill to play free safety in that scheme they've got keanu neal the box safety i was, I was going with the same reasoning there mm-hmm. with my falcons at number 45 now i have to pivot I'm looking at the Falcons' offensive line, which all of a sudden went from one of the best in the league to having question marks, Mike. Mm-hmm. 
Tyson Brelo's playing right tackle. Jamon Brown, James Carpenter at guard. I think I got to go O line here, and I'm just looking at the way the board is falling. I like Chris Lindstrom, Ooh. the guard from Boston College. Here we like him in pass pro. I think mm-hmm. he'll be a potential upgrade over either one of those guards, even though there was a little bit of investment there. You just get him in the mix. He's played a little bit of tackle before. I like Chris, Chris Lindstrom from Boston College to go protect Boston College QB Matt Ryan. I can dig it, uh, and I think their offensive line looks a lot different right now than it did a couple years ago. A couple years ago, they're in the conversation for best offensive line in the NFL. Alex Mack now aging. Andy Levitre gone. Uh, right tackle. Again, my, like I said, my brain's not working today for some yeah, reason. Yeah, what's up with you? Gone. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Ryan Schrader, Schrader gone. Yeah. So that offensive line has taken big hits. Lindstrom, it's probably top pass protecting guard uh, prospect in this draft. I think he adds. And it's perfect for that scheme in terms of what he can do athletically. So, yes, good pick there, Steve. All right, on to 48 where we have the Miami Dolphins. In round one, they went Brian Burns, edge defender, here in round two, I think this is where they go offensive line, and this is where Elkton Jenkins is going to come off the that board. That makes sense. Yeah. Make a lot of sense. Pouncey gone last year. Did not really have an answer on the interior. They tried to fill that interior with Josh Sitton, but Miami Dolphins guard to guard has been one of the worst in the NFL for now for, for a while. A while. Yeah. Like pretty much the whole Ryan Tannehill era there. They had one of the worst interiors in the NFL. So does a goes a long way towards solidifying that there. No, I like it. I think that's it's been a major weakness for a while, and I think that it makes a ton of sense. He could play mm-hmm. either spot. You just figure out where he's going to fit in. Yep, I have the Eagles at 53 via the Ravens. Uh, to, the, to the dismay of Eagles fans, I went corner in the first round. The explanation there was David Long. Mm-hmm. Right, guys, Jalen Mills and... You know, Rasul Douglas, and you know, even though I like Sidney Jones, like those guys aren't going to keep me from taking another corner, even though they're all young and under control. Cravon LeBlanc, I know who they have, mm-hmm. but I think David Long could step in right up opposite Ronald Darby right away, and you push all those other guys down the depth chart, and you're making your team better, especially a team like the Eagles that doesn't have a ton of major holes. It's kind of like the story every year. Mm-hmm. They're strong in a lot of areas, so I think continuing to add to that defensive backfield was smart. Now I'm looking at. You've got Jason Peters aging at left tackle. I know they got Jordan Mailata that they got late last year. He could be the left tackle of the future, but I still think you want to invest at that position, get the next developmental guy. So there's a couple guys to choose from here at offensive tackle. I'm going to go Titus Howard okay. just because we're talking developmental Devin, guy. So yeah. Alabama State uh, plays, you know, uh, played at the Senior Bowl, did a really nice job there. High school nice main tackle there. Yep. Yeah, and he did a really nice job against Williams. Auburn when they played – FBS competition, so Titus Howard, developmental tackle for the Eagles at 53. I'm glad you want Titus Howard because I have the Texans at 54 because I need a guy to step in and start right away at tackle after you won TJ Hawkinson round one. So I'm grabbing Mac Sharping there. Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois, four years as a starter, off the charts production there at NIU. I think he could step in and be able to start right away at a higher level than what they've seen in recent years from their tackles. The Texans have back-to-back picks. Do you want to take yes. the second one, too? I'll take the second one, too, because that allows me to grab my guy, Yeldy Froholt, the offensive guard from Arkansas. Probably He's right up there with Chris Linsom, in my mind, in terms of pass protection at the NFL level. Tested off the charts in terms of the movement drills of the combine. Only five pressures allowed in the SEC. Left tackle, offensive guard, goes a long way for the Texans to shoring up their pass, bro. Texans fans had a lot of uh, feedback for us as well. Mm -hmm. When it came to the TJ Hawkinson pick in the first round, here's why we did it. Hawkinson was very good value at number 23, and then now that they had those back-to-back picks, they got potential starters at tackle and guard even in the second round. Yep. And that's why we didn't go offensive line because the board didn't fall that way. It was a great example of trust in the board from Mm -hmm. a value standpoint. 